It's ideal. Yeah, it's ideal. One year ago, sun up, the second day of pheasant season. Right over there. Look at them. There's four roosters. They, they look like maybe a hat. Oh, they're, we ought to get right over there. Let's go. Yeah, let's all oh, look at them. Look at them. Oh. Last year, most of the pheasants flushed a ways off on the crisp, frosty morning. We had to run to get to where the birds were holding. This year, oh, it was a different story. At 20 till 8, a fog bank was keeping the farm fields dark. But it was humid, the grass was wet, and in these conditions, pheasants tend to hold tighter and flush closer. They don't like running as much through the wet grass. There's a rooster. That was? Yeah. Yeah, it looked like one. There's another one. Yep. Here we go. Let's take a slow here. Boy, they're going all over. Well, I hope you can see this on the camera, huh? I can see it. They are popping out left and right. Time to break, Marty. Still a little dark. Hard to see the colors on some of the roosters. Elapsed mm. hunting time, five minutes. That just shows you we walked right past it. It was right behind us. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, they're here, Nelson. Yep, they're here. Good work. Lots of them. Fast flying. The first rooster, a juvenile, was taken by our host, Brett Ramey from Charlotte. Right. Good start. A little bit better than the clays I was shooting the other day. <laughs> Brett's right. Shooting sporting clays can be tougher than pheasant hunting, but only when the roosters are flushing close like this. On this morning, quite a few were flushing behind us. Oh! Mikey got that one. Good work. Isn't that something? They're sitting right there. Two birds we got went up behind us. Huh. Using uh, three inch fives here. They're actually, turkey loads. Look how long they are. Barely fit it in there. But, yeah, these are duplex, twos and fives together, copper coated. Isn't that something? You know, that bird, that bird sat there when we stopped. We stopped for maybe a minute or two, talked, got the dogs, and when we started moving, flushed out behind us. This is Brett Ramey's farm. Well over 100 acres is in the government set-aside program, which means it's left in grass and not cultivated each year. Relatively safe from predators in this thick, high grass, pheasants nest here in the summer and roost here year-round. See, we have a lot of dew on the grass. So right here, John, look at this. There's where they roost. This is a little form in here. And that's pheasant poop right there. And you see it all over up here. And they, they roost here and fly over to the, the field. See, last year, that field was full of corn and it wasn't cut yet. It's cut now, so I think they're going to stay in this field maybe a little longer. Now, we've got enough dogs here. We've got yellow lab, Llewellyn setter, and a golden retriever. Really, the importance is not so much to find the birds, but to, to flush them, but to find them after they're down. Because they can get in this grass. And hard, to, hard to locate. The dogs have to work to find birds in this thick grass. The most experienced dog of the group is Dandy. It's a 13-year-old English setter from the Llewellyn strain. Dandy has pointed thousands of pheasants. Now, Sport is the unruly yellow lab retriever, young but excellent at finding lost birds in the thick grass, and that's what's needed here. Now, see how Dandy is moving differently now, deliberately? See, this is a point. There's a bird ahead, but apparently this bird is moving. Dandy pulls back and circles slowly, trying to get downwind for a better smell. There is a bird here someplace. Now the third dog comes into play, Happy, or Hap, the golden retriever. Hap is right there most of the time to pick up a downed bird. Now retrievers don't need training to teach them to pick birds up, but they do need obedience training to teach them how to bring birds back and to whom. Carrie Hurst is handling the dogs. Her son Marty, of course, is the dog's buddy at home, so more often than not, 
The dogs bring the roosters over to him, no matter who shoots them. Marty's stepdad, Nelson Hurst, has turned this boy into a real hunter and a darn good shot. If you haven't had the pleasure of hunting behind a pointing dog, you're missing a real enjoyable outdoor experience. The dog's motion and speed tell you what's up ahead, if anything, and when you would better get ready for action. Without a dog, we wouldn't have had a clue as to whether we should be extra alert or if we could relax a little as we walk. But now is the time to be extra alert. Look at that dog work. I tell you, that's an experienced dog. Works slow, steady, methodically. Of course, it's 13 years old. There we go. Uh, that's what he said. I thought the last one was a rooster. I almost fell myself. Ten. You can't really see in regular speed where this hen starts out, so let's back her up in slow motion. The hen was holding almost at my feet. Three or four more steps, and I would have been right on top of her. Hold and tight. Very tight. Come on, boy, get in here. Oh, a lot of roosting in here. Is that a boy? Yeah. They could be sitting all around us. Because Brett lives on this farm, he sees the birds go in and out of this field year-round and knows they could be almost anywhere. They continuously move roosting areas to make it more difficult for predators to find them. Once again, Dandy has a bird going. Watch for it right in front of the dog. Hey! Boy, that dog is on point forever, you guys. Yeah? A rather dandy shot, I might say. Thank you, thank you. Come on, get the bird, Sport. Sport, come here, Sport. Hey, come on, Sport. Sport, over here. Yes, thank you. All right. I do appreciate that. Yeah, the, oh, that's a ring neck pheasant. Yeah, that was a nice point. Superb shot. Oh, I, I would have said that. We got that well covered. <laughs> Look at my glasses fogging up. It's not like last year. Remember last year, John? Oh, yes. When we were walking down here, sleeting, snowing, miserable. Boy, it's nice to have a little break. I wish I would have uh, left the long underwear home. Oh, well. Now, now, one of the keys is for pheasant hunters, one thing that's cool, is to leave part of the tail sticking out. <laughs> so there's no question that you got a bird. Well, this is pheasant hunting like the good old days, but it's not widespread. You'll usually only find it like this in large fields of thick grass that aren't cultivated. Now the question, why didn't the pheasant cross the road? There we go. Because Nelson Hurst had one rooster to go to fill his limit. Oh, him! Hunters always call out hen to let nearby hunters know it's been identified as a female. Only roosters are legal to kill because taking roosters only has a minimal effect on the breeding potential of the flock. John Ford is the only one who heard or saw this bird go up behind us. He taped it and swung back around just in time to catch a few more flushes ahead. We're getting to that stage where all of us are filling our limits with second roosters. Nelson is done, Marty's done, and Brett's limit comes up after a few more steps. Hey, way to go. Well, I'm done. And now my second rooster in front of the camera. Hey. Well, that rooster expired in a few seconds. A few reflexes and Hap picks it up. That's my last rooster before I gave my shotgun to John. Now, Nelson Hurst is a local game bird breeder 
who brought the three dogs along. These dogs didn't lose a single bird, which is usually the big problem in hunting heavy grass like this. An hour of slogging our way through the set-aside grass, and let me tell you, we were pooped. But we had five limits of wild Michigan ringneck roosters in a little over an hour. Wow. Well, the birds we got, these there have been Sichuan pheasants planted in the area, you said? Yeah, a mile, about a mile and a half uh, south uh, west. And, of course, they would have black necks, totally, totally dark with no white ring on them, but all the roosters we got are they, ringnecks. Yep, every single one of them. They uh, released ten roosters over here, and I know of at least three of them that were hitting the road. <coughs> uh, I'm not sure how many more. There was a Sichuan hen that had uh, chicks right here on their side of the garden, hmm. and last time I saw her, she still had the nine chicks with her. But... But these appear to be all native ringnecks. I tell you, there was nothing wrong with the way they flew. There's one up here with the white on its head that I shot. Right, right here, see, see this one? Doesn't have a total ring around it. I'm not sure that might be a cross. Just a, just a white patch on each yeah, side. Yeah, a white patch there and a white that, patch on that side. It's hard to tell, that's a young bird too. That's a young bird. Yeah. This one, one, this one on might here, even be too. The second two. from the end. That's an old time ringneck. See how he's got the white on top yeah, of his head? Yeah, by the eyes. The white right up there. Yeah, that's from the ones that our grandfather shot had them white stripes down them. Huh. You don't see a whole lot of them. I'm surprised that there was, well, like this one here, that old cockbird I shot by the road. He doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. It's been bred out of him. But he's still got some pretty good stock left in here to show those white lines down there. Well, the story is, though, in the right habitat, pheasants are alive and well. Yeah. Many more local pheasants from this farm will be eaten by predators in the months ahead, but not as many as on farms that are plowed clean every year. As a predator with just a three-week season, man takes relatively few. <laughs> Protected by a grassy habitat that is not mowed during nesting season, pheasant reproduction on this farm will replace all the missing birds next spring. That's what we call a balance in nature.